Well, welcome back. Um, let's start with a bit of a situation report. Um, I want to get the varnishing done on the pom-pom bits. The weather has turned a little bit colder than I'd hoped. Uh, so it's a little bit colder than I'd wanted to be doing this. Uh, so instead of spraying, I might be brush painting the varnish on. Uh, the Craftmaster paint does go on nicely when it's um, brushed, so I'm not too worried about that. There is a brushing additive as well that they've supplied, uh, so I will get a coat of varnish on like that. It's a little bit frustrating because I wanted to show you some other stuff with the spray. Um, I did have a lot of people asking me what the spray gun I was using was. Uh, let's take another little look at it. Um, it is a little sort of uh, spot repair gun is what uh, the sprayer that I used to work with called that kind of thing. Um, they're not too expensive. There is an example of one here. This is what's on eBay at the moment or Amazon at the moment. And I'll put a link in the description. Um, and I also had a question of what compressor I was using. So let's just take a look down here. So the one I've got is a Clark air compressor, one and a half horsepower and uh, 25 litre tank, I believe. So here's an Amazon link to something similar. And again, I'll put, drop a link in the description just to help you out if you're after that kind of thing. So let's also take a look at where I'm at with the temperature. So it's got cold outside, so I'm heating this part of the workshop because the other side is very difficult to heat. Um, and as such, this side of the workshop isn't really big enough for me to set up the bench to spray both sides and, and get it all done nicely. So that's why I'm going to brush paint. And I can do one side at a time, leave it laying flat and uh, paint it nicely. So let's get on with that. Now you may well have thought at the end of that that it was looking quite stripy and uneven. Um, and I must say I was feeling the same. But I've just done the tender as well. And now let's take a look at the cab and see what's happening. So as you can see, in the time it's taken to do the tender, it has flowed out a little bit more. And in fact, the tender's... I've overworked the tender a little bit, but we'll see how that comes out when it dries. So we're back to uh, tomorrow, and I wasn't happy with the finish on the varnish, so I very gently rubbed it down, uh, giving it a clean up with some very fine emery, tried to take all the hot high spots off, but I'm getting close to the transfers. So I'm going to give it a coat of varnish see how it with the spray see how it looks after that and then uh, do the other side as well uh, and if it needs it give it rub down again and and just keep going until it, it looks good and while i'm at it i'll do the cab as well um, with the cab she's all ready to go um the it didn't look too bad on the cab actually uh but i will do the roof so that any overspray on the roof it, it'll just all get done but it means I will do the cab roof separately as well because I don't want the finish to look funny between the two so that's where we are I'll see you in a moment
Now I know exactly what a few of you are going to say because I'm going to say it exactly to myself as well. As soon as I started spraying that, I realised I forgot my mask. So I would normally have this on. I was a bit preoccupied with setting up the camera and I forgot to put it on. So, mask. So all that's left to be done now is to leave the workshop alone. I'm leaving the light on so I remember to go back and turn the heaters off later. Uh, and have a beer and see what it looks like later on. So, let's take a look at that shortly. So on this side of the tender, unfortunately I had a bit of a run. It was only very slight and you might not have noticed it, but in this area I hadn't really got a covering of the varnish. So I've rubbed out the run and we're going to give it another coat of varnish. And then I will show you once it's done and we can start putting it all together. And obviously if I'm giving one side of the tender a coat of varnish, I'll give the whole thing a coat of varnish and I might as well give the cab another coat of varnish as well, just because uh, extra coats of varnish is more protection for the transfers. So that's what I'm about to do. You've already seen me spray it once, so I'll show you when it's done and hopefully we'll be putting it back together shortly. So it's starting to get exciting. I've put the numbers, plaques on the side of the cab. Now it's time to put the cab on the engine. Uh, final few touches. I think the uh, reach rod couldn't go on until the cab's in place and the, um, what was the other thing? Uh, the whistle pipe can't go on until the cab's in place either. So I'm going to get that all done. Uh, engine back together. Then I'll probably be getting too cold. I'm already quite cold. Don't know if you can see that. It is chilly in this side of the workshop. Um, it's a very cold day today. I think last night I heard was the coldest November night on uh, record. And if you have a look at this, bearing in mind it is still November. Uh, this was on my way to work, uh, school to drop the girls off this morning before on my way to work. So that was to the side of the road. I always think that's a beautiful thing to see, but there we go. So cab on, uh, pipe work finish, sort out the handrails, and then we should be almost there. Let's uh, get this together. So I've given these Axobots covers a very slight polish, just so they didn't look quite as rough. And now let's go and couple this up to the engine and see how it looks. As you can see, it's pretty cold out here. Um, I am really happy with it. It looks superb. So, should we go and take a closer look? Here we go. So, it's had a full repaint and a new crank axle. And there we go. All that's left to be done is get some decent pictures of it. <laughs> 